Hi guys, my name is Elena Winton and I'm with the Human Health and Performance Lab at the University of Guelph in Dr. Jamie Burr's lab. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the importance of sleep for athletic performance. So let's get started. These are some learning objectives that I'm going to be covering today and hopefully you guys will take something from this presentation. First off, I wanna chat with you of why sleep is important for athletes and why not getting enough sleep can be severely detrimental to your performance. So how sleep extension, so napping or sleeping longer, can be beneficial and what sort of strategies are out there to enhance your sleep duration and quality. Sleep is probably the most important part of recovery from training and to prepare for subsequent training. Sleep is crucial for the download of information acquired during that day. It allows for the refinement of a technique and skill development to become ingrained and capitalize on the information obtained. This would include examples of learning a new throwing technique, another step in your jump, or setting up blocks. Some even refer to sleeping as a rebound effect for learning, allowing you to form neural connections, integrating what was already learned and new information acquired. Not only does memory consolidation happen when you're sleeping, but certain hormones are released as well. Growth hormone and androgens, type of male specific sex hormones, for example, testosterone, are released during sleep which are essential for muscle repair and building, bone growth, and promoting the use of fat as a fuel source. Melatonin is also released, and this is a sleepy hormone that promotes sleep and has a range of antioxidant properties, scavenging reactive oxygen species and reducing chronic and acute inflammation from your training bouts that day. Next, we have the circadian rhythm. This regulates the sleepiness and wakefulness in a 24 hour time period. This is controlled by light, allowing individuals to be more alert in the morning and drowsy at night. It can be genetically and environmentally altered. So someone like me could be predispositioned to wake up earlier than someone who is a night owl and stays up later. However, it is easy to environmentally alter your circadian rhythm by using artificial light at night if you want to stay up to study or watch TV. Just like you're more alert, so high, and more drowsy, low, at certain times of the day, your performance also has these highs and lows. As you can see in the picture, after a good night's sleep, your performance steadily rises throughout the day and seems to peak around 6 p.m. This is slightly different for everyone. You could peak a little later or a little earlier, depending on your circadian cycle. Around this time, however, muscular strength, temperature, alertness are all increased with an increased ratio of testosterone to cortisol. Testosterone is an anabolic hormone, which means it builds things, while cortisol, a stress hormone, is a catabolic hormone, breaking down things. This increase of testosterone to cortisol allows for your muscle to be strong when you're training that day. Though, if you have a bad night's sleep, you can see that around 6 p.m. that day, your performance has significantly declined compared to yesterday with a good night's sleep. But don't worry if you throw off your rhythm you can regain it back. Some individuals and athletes are known to take melatonin supplementation before bed, around 0.5 to 5 gram doses, if they have difficulty falling asleep. If you think you have great difficulty falling asleep and th think that this would be something that you'd like to test, please talk to your coaches to see if it would be an appropriate solution for you. Since athletes travel a lot, Many athletes adapt themselves to the time zone that they'll be entering with light exposure before they get to their destination. They do this to be able to adapt quicker with training and lifestyle there. High protein in the morning increases tyrosine levels, stimulating the re release of dopamine and non-epinephrine, which make you feel more alert and give you more energy. High carbohydrates at night allow for the re release of serotonin, which make you feel sleepy and relaxed. Carbohydrates also need energy to metabolize, requiring a constant flow of blood to the gut, making you feel more sleepy. Lastly, moderate exercise has been shown to increase alertness with the release of catecholamines. But what happens when you close your eyes? There are many things that happen when you sleep. You enter into five different stages that encompass one cycle. 
Each cycle lasts about 90 to 110 minutes, and you go through about five cycles of your entire sleeping period. Stage one is your first stage and is very light. You're here for less than 10 minutes and can easily be woken up. This is where your muscles are twitching as you're falling asleep. Stage two is fairly light. Your heart rate and breathing patterns slow. You're here for half of your cycle. If you were to take a power nap, this is where you'd want to wake up because you're starting to get into your deep sleep stages. Stage three is your first stage of deep sleep, where there is no eye movement or muscle activity. There's also no stimuli to the outside world. Stage four is your very deep sleep, where you experience rhythmic breathing, where your body can repair muscles and tissues, stimulate growth and development, boosts immune function, and builds energy for when you awaken. Your last stage is your REM stage. This is your rapid eye movement period. This happens about 90 minutes after you initially fall asleep. This is where your brain is most active and you start to dream. Your eyes jerk quickly, your heart rate and blood pressure increase, and your breathing becomes fast and irregular. This is a stage where your brain consolidates and processes all the information from that day before it can be stored in your long-term memory. The reason why I'm telling you this is because if you don't have enough sleep or cut off your sleep too early, you will risk the loss of memory consolidation and won't recover properly mentally and possibly physically. You need to be able to complete all cycles of your sleep for adequate recovery. By not completing all stages, you can deprive your body of sleep. This means a lack of restorative sleep over a period of time, which eventually alters performance of tasks. Right now, there is a disconnect between reality and ideality. These two professional international groups from Great Britain and Australia are sleeping on average 6.5 to 7 hours of sleep per night. This is the sleep they're getting, however, might not be enough sleep that they should be receiving. On the left-hand side are two individuals who are habitually active, receiving the recommended 7 to 8 hours of sleep per night. They jog for about 150 minutes, recommended by CSEP guidelines, eat their recommended fruits and vegetables, so they're overall healthy individuals. The amount of sleep that they get is enough to aid in the repair and the recovery of their muscles in the moderate amount of work they've performed. Their goal is to maintain health. However, on the right is Usain Bolt. He is an elite athlete and his goal is to focus on performance. So what I mean is that Bolt wants a huge stress hit to his body, so he needs a big recovery hit. Bolt needs way more sleep than the individuals to his left. The more effective recovery Bolt is getting, the faster he will be able to see the super compensation in the task he's performing. There can be severe consequences by not getting enough sleep. You can have reduced reaction times, trouble focusing with decreased mood and determination. There can be impairment of hormone and immune systems, meaning there might not have been as much testosterone released or too much melatonin was released. There could be a 30 to 40% potential decline in glucose metabolism. And lastly, you can have an increased risk of injury. Studies have revealed that sleeping more than eight hours decreases risk by 61%. But what if you sleep regularly, but you can't sleep the night before a competition? That's okay, because most athletes do. A study completed with over 600 German male and female athletes in team and individual sports showed that 62% reported poor sleep before a competition. 77% had difficulties falling asleep thinking about the competition. So maybe you want a notepad near your bed to be able to write down your thoughts in the morning so you can look at them and throw them away or make a checklist to calm down before the competition. Over half the individuals had pre-competition nerves as well. 29% revealed a lack of familiarity of surroundings. So it might be a good idea to bring something from home to familiarize yourself with your new setting. So something like a pillow or a blanket or a stuffed animal. Of these individuals, 57% said that these difficulties did not affect performance. 27% said that they were tired during the day. 18% said they were in a bad mood. So don't worry if you're in a bad mood or didn't have good sleep because most people didn't either. Thinking ahead, it might be beneficial to have nine to 10 hours of sleep the week before or the week of competition. So you have a sleep reserve in case you have a bad sleep the night before a competition. You can also take naps as well, anywhere from 10 to 16 minutes ideally. 
having a nap on the rise to your peak performance for the day. You also want to take a nap short enough to achieve maximum benefits, but not too long to result in sleep inertia, which is the reduction of the ability to think and perform upon awakening. Stanford came out with a couple of studies involving team and individual athletes, so basketball and swimming, to assess sleep extension. There was a baseline of two weeks of regular sleep and the next five to seven weeks of sleep extension. So they were in bed for a minimum of 10 hours. The basketball players had faster sprint times, improved shooting accuracy, and increased reaction time. For the swimmers, there was improvement of speed of half a second and reaction time was also improved. Team USA compiled some data on football players with the same sleep extension protocol. They improved their 20 yard shuffle by 0 0.10 seconds along with their 40 yard dash. These times could be the difference between winning a competition or not going to one at all. Continuing with the benefits are elevated mood, increased alertness, decreased sprint times, and improved reaction times. Here, I have some strategies that I think would be beneficial if you tend not to sleep well. Reading to calm down before you go to bed. Some relaxation techniques such as breathing exercises or meditation. Headspace is an app where you can download on your phone and it is self-guided meditation that you can set for a specific amount of time. Avoid the use of blue emitting devices such as a cell phone, laptop, or computer. You can add blue light filters that are available for download such as Night Shift on the Apple phones, Blue Light Filter app on Androids, and Flux on computers. The blue light suppresses melatonin so you're not releasing the sleepy hormone to be able to fall asleep. You should also limit caffeine intake four hours prior to sleeping so you're not too jittery at night. You also need to emphasize the bedroom with activities and settings that are conducive to sleeping. You should have your bedroom around 19 degrees Celsius, dark and quiet. Your room should be associated with sleeping activities, so limit the amount of work or stress in your room. Continuing with strategies, don't go to bed until you're sleepy. Your body is smart and knows when it needs to sleep, so listen to it. Try to wake up with natural light. Try to have your blinds a little open so you can wake up with the sun. I know that with busy schedules, that's not always the case. There are alarms that have a light source where the artificial light gradually turns to simulate the sun. Don't hit snooze. Five minutes aren't conducive to being more alert when you wake up. If you feel like you need more sleep, set your alarm for 30 minutes or another hour of sleep. Again, have high carbs before bed to increase serotonin levels to make you feel sleepy. Some animal and cell culture models have shown that tart cherry juice and walnuts increase blood plasma levels of melatonin, which can be conducive to sleeping. Lastly, reduce fluid intake so you have a less disturbed sleep. Here are some of my take home points. No coach has ever told an athlete they sleep too much. They train you hard so they know you need to recover hard. Recreational individuals need seven to eight hours to recover. Elite athletes need more than that. Sleep allows for mood and physical enhancements. If you need a longer sleep or naps, they should be around 10 to 60 minutes, keeping in line with the rise of peak performance of the day. Lastly, pick what strategy works best for you to fall asleep. Thanks for listening. You can contact me at awinton at uofguelph.ca or check out our website at www.hplguelph.weebly.com.